The nervous system of the human is broken down into two categories. We have the central nervous system, which contains the brain and a spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system. Now, the peripheral nervous system is made up of neurons and support cells that are found outside of the central nervous system, outside of the brain and a spinal cord. So, the peripheral nervous system is further divided into the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. So in this lecture, we're going to focus on the somatic nervous system. Now, the somatic nervous system consists of two divisions. We have the motor division that consists of only motor neurons, also known as efferent neurons, and we have the sensory division, which consists of only sensory neurons, also known as afferent neurons. Now, recall that a motor neuron is basically a neuron that accepts an electrical signal from the central nervous system and sends it away to some type of target organ, uh, gland, muscle tissue, and so forth, while the sensory neuron picks up that electrical signal from some type of outside stimulus and sends that electrical signal to the central nervous system where it's integrated as well as processed. Now, the somatic nervous system is responsible for innervating and controlling skeletal muscle, skeletal tissue, which basically means the somatic nervous system is ultimately responsible for voluntary movement. So if I want to actually, for example, bend and extend my arm, this requires the somatic nervous system. So it's the brain that actually creates or initiates that electrical signal, but it's the somatic nervous system that actually extends my arm as we'll see in just a moment. So let's begin with our motor division. So let's discuss the motor neurons found in the somatic nervous system. So as I mentioned earlier, motor neurons are those neurons that accept our signals from the central nervous system, so the brain or the spinal cord, and send these signals to the target tissue, gland, organ, muscle, etc. In the case of the somatic nervous system, the target organ is always our skeletal muscle. So in the somatic nervous system, the dendrites and the cell body of the motor neuron always begin, always originate in the spinal cord. So. Let's take a cross section of the spinal cord as shown in the following diagram. We have the white matter and we have the gray matter. So the cell body and the dendrites of the motor neuron in the somatic nervous system always begin within our spinal cord. So let's suppose I want to actually move my bicep. What happens is our brain, my brain initiates, creates that electrical signal in the form of an action potential. And that action potential travels and eventually ends up on the dendrites of our somatic motor neuron. And that dendrite picks up that signal. And once the signal is picked up by the dendrites, it sends it through the axon of our body. So the axon of the somatic motor neuron. Now notice the body of this neuron, the axon, not the body, the cell body is within the central nervous system. But notice our axon of the motor neuron is located entirely in the peripheral nervous system. So our electrical signal, the action potential, travels and eventually ends up at our axon terminal. Now the axon terminal is right next to our cell membrane of the muscle cell. In this case, let's say it's the skeletal muscle found inside my bicep. So if we zoom in on the synapse, this is basically our neuromuscular junction. It's the synapse between our neuron, the motor neuron, and our cell membrane of that muscle. So if we zoom in, we basically get the following picture. So we have the axon terminal of our somatic motor neuron and we have the cell membrane of the skeletal muscle inside our biceps muscle. So 
Notice that the cell membrane contains these receptor proteins and the axon terminal contains these synaptic vesicles that carry special neurotransmitters. Now, in the case of the motor division of the somatic nervous system, these neurotransmitters are always acetylcholine. So as the action potential travels and eventually ends up on the exon terminal, it basically causes the release of these synaptic vesicles and that releases our acetylcholine. The acetylcholine eventually binds onto these receptor proteins that create an action potential and that action potential ultimately causes the contraction of our biceps muscle. So in this way, it's the brain that generates that electrical signal, but it's the motor neuron of the somatic nervous system that actually causes that movement, that voluntary movement in the first place. Now, one more thing we have to notice about the motor neurons is when they actually leave, when they actually exit the spinal cord, they always exit from the front side from the ventral side of our spinal cord. So if this is the back and this is the front, notice they always leave from the front side of our, uh, from our spinal cord. Now, one more thing we have to notice is we have a single axon leaving this spinal, uh, spinal cord and the axon eventually ends up exactly at our effector target. So our effector organ, in this case, our biceps tissue, the biceps muscle. So basically we have a single axon traveling all the way to the target tissue, the target muscle. Now let's move on to our sensory neurons. So sensory neurons are those neurons that connect to receptors. These receptors basically pick up stimuli and this stimulus is transformed into an electrical signal by those sensory neurons of the somatic nervous system. So these somatic sensory neurons then carry our electrical signal via a single axon as in this case and they carry that signal to the back side which is our dorsal side of our our spinal cord. So the motor neurons leave from the front side, the ventral side, but the sensory neurons pick up those signals and carry them through the back side into our spinal cord. The back side is the dorsal side. Now, one major difference between the sensory neurons and the motor neurons of our somatic system is the cell body of our uh, motor neuron is found inside our spinal cord, but the cell body here is found close in the back side, so close to the back side of our spinal cord. So this region where we find the cell body of the sensory neuron is known as the dorsal or back side. So dorsal root ganglia, where ganglia simply means neurons outside of the spinal cord and the brain. So let's see how this signal actually takes place. So let's suppose I apply pressure onto my finger. As I apply the pressure, the dendrites of our sensory neuron contain special pressure receptors. And when I apply, these receptors are basically, these receptors basically create a force. That force creates the oscillation, the movement of our ions, and that ultimately creates our electric current, the action potential. And so the action potential travels, our electric current travels through the axon, eventually that creates an action potential at this section, the axon terminal, which is found inside our spinal cord. And then that sends the electric, uh, uh, electric signal up through the spinal cord into the brain, and the brain basically senses that pressure. Now, uh, sensory neurons and motor neurons, so these pathways that we discussed so far, involve voluntary movement. So if I want to move my hand, if I want to extend it or bend it, this is basically a result of the somatic nervous system, the motor division and the sensory division.
Now, we are in complete control of this voluntary motion, but the somatic nervous system doesn't only control voluntary movement of skeletal muscle, it also controls reflex arcs, or reflex arcs that we are not in control of. So, reflex arcs are basically those are reflexes, those responses that we have no control over. So they simply take place and we cannot do anything about them. So the somatic nervous system is also responsible for reflex arcs. These are quick and automatic responses that cannot be controlled voluntarily. And they basically are a result of outside stimuli. So let's suppose I place my hand on a hot stove. So without even knowing, my hand will basically move away. Now eventually I'm going to feel that, but initially I have no control over the fact that my hand will automatically move. And this is known as a reflex arc and our somatic nervous system controls this reflex arc and it involves both sensory and motor neurons. So we have two types of reflex arcs. We have monosynaptic and polysynaptic. So monosynaptic simply means we have a single synapse between our motor neuron and a sensory neuron. But polysynaptic means we have more than one synapse. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at these two diagrams. So in diagram one, this is our spinal cord. So Let's suppose my stimulus is that hot stove. So I place my hand on the hot stove. That stimulus is transformed into an electrical signal that is picked up by our sensory neuron of the somatic nervous system. It travels from the back side, the dorsal side of our spinal cord. And let's say it basically synapses first with an interneuron. If it synapses with an interneuron, that means we have one synapse here. Now eventually the interneuron shown in brown found inside the spinal cord will synapse with our um, motor neuron of the somatic nervous system. And that electrical signal will basically travel back into my hand and it will tell my hand to basically move that hand. So this is known as a polysynaptic reflex because it contains one, two synapses. So more than one synapse. 